Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can make it yours on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we're discussing the somewhat overlooked and hugely underrated Omega Speedmaster Racing, a model launched in 40mm stainless steel back at Basel World 2012. It is in many respects the successor to the late great Speedmaster Reduced. That watch was a 39, this one is a 40. This one's upgraded in every way, however. On my 16cm circumference wrist, you can see this lovely inverse panda dial Speedmaster Racing sits a reasonable thickness of 15.2mm, and you can see a lot of that height is in the cantilevered tachymeter bezel. We'll talk about that in a moment. Lug to lug the watch is nicely constrained as it's only 46 millimeters lug to lug. Now if you add the solid end links to the bracelet it's a more substantial 50.6 millimeters but nevertheless I can recommend this watch easily on the bracelet for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. Throw it on a 19 millimeter strap and that is the size and I would recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. The bracelet is a nice piece and you can see proportionally this is a good look. The the bracelet is substantial. Back in the day, the old Speedmaster Reduced used pin sleeve fixed lugs, or I should say links. And this is a wonderful upscale look for what is generally considered to be the entry level of the Speedmaster family. This is how good the entry level Speedmaster is, and that's really saying something. Staggered link alignment, finish, and link size creates a bracelet that's a halfway hybrid between a pure sports bracelet and a dress watch bracelet. The highlights really bend it towards versatility. It can actually be dressed up as easily as it can be dressed down. You'll see that there is a half link on both sides of the clasp and then there are two anchoring positions inside the clasp. The clasp, likewise, quite substantial. It's milled out from the solid. It's a lot like what you'll find on a Diver 300 meter, albeit without the fold-out extension. Twin trigger release and you can see deeply engraved. This one is remarkably intact. This has never been refinished. Now jumping back, you can see that the squared off shoulder of the lugs give them a sporty profile. I should say the links give them a sporty profile. Lugs, properly speaking, are lyre shaped with an expanding belt on their ends and you're familiar with this case shape from Speedmasters and Seamasters over the years you can see a satin finish horizontal the polished flare of the lug end and a little bit of an inward twist or dihedral that faces the inner link now the crown side features a little bit of a countersink with sheer guards for the crown as well as pump style pushers and you can see the bezel has an awful lot of cantilever to it. It's conical on its top and its bottom with a polished rim. You can also see that it's nicely sloped so it's not a flat tack like you'll find for example on a moon watch. The dial itself is beautiful. It's black, it's silver, it has handsome chapter rings in the slightly sunken and as you can see stamped guilloche clou de Paris or pyramid form of the sub registers. There is a date down at six o'clock in case you're wondering what the pusher adjuster on the flank does. This movement is based on a value 7753. The 7753 has a classic tri-register alignment. Normally you have 12, 9, and 6 with the 7750 base. Well, 7753 turns that 90 degrees, but you lose the quick set for the date. That said, you don't lose the hacking seconds function for the watch. And there's a lot of tech as this is a heavily modified 7753. Okay, this is Omega Caliber 3330, adjusted in five positions, a certified COSC chronometer. It is also a coaxial escapement, and it is a remarkably efficient unidirectional winder with a 52 hour power reserve, a robust free sprung balance that's highly shock resistant. It benefits from 100 meter water resistance and although the standard 7753 is a cam chronograph, this one has been converted to a column wheel so it's very crisp to actuate and it's been granted both the free sprung architecture and an SI14 anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. So underneath this hippocampus image there is a lot of tech. This is a highly modified and customized movement for the Omega Speedmaster Racing. As the dial declares proudly, it is both a coaxial and a chronometer. And unlike a standard moon watch or the old Speedy Reduced, this one with 100 meter water resistance is fully swimmable. You can see it and get your racing on, your aerospace on, or your swim on on the watch box. Omega Speedmaster Racing.